If there are iconic aircraft, then this is one of them. And in this case, it's integral to an iconic story. The McDonnell F-4 Phantom II prototype first flew on May 27, 1958. Capable of speeds beyond twice the speed of sound, in production it soon became the U.S. Navy's fastest, highest flying, and longest range fighter. It served with the Marines, Air Force, and Navy, and was chosen by the Blue Angels and Air Force Thunderbirds flight demonstration teams. At least 11 countries, in addition to the United States, have used the aircraft. It is, by some accounts, one of the most successful fighters ever produced. It was Vietnam where the Phantom cut its teeth, and it is there on March 10th, 1967, that one Captain Bob Pardo, on his birthday, etched his name into flying lore. Flying with the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing, Pardo was tasked to attack a steel mill near what was then known as the most heavily defended airspace in the history of air warfare, the city of Hanoi. Fifty miles from the target, fellow aviator Captain Earl Amon's jet was hit and hit again over the target. Each Phantom carries two men. Amon flew with weapons system officer Bob Houghton. Pardo flew with Steve Wayne. Coming off the target, it was clear Amon had a problem. He was losing fuel. He and Houghton wouldn't even make the relative safety of Laos. Pardo saw Eamon's aircraft fall behind the group and went to work. He quickly surmised Eamon was going to need a push. But how? He first asked Eamon to jettison the jet's drag chute. Pardo would insert the nose of his plane into the vacated space at the tail of Eamon's jet and push him to the Laotian border. They tried, but the turbulence coming off Eamon's plane was too much. Pardo wouldn't give up. He tried another plan. He flew under the other jet, hoping to literally lift it and push his comrade as far as they could go. The maneuver was too risky. Airflow between the two jets tried to suck Pardo in as he got closer. By this time, both engines of Eamon's jet had flamed out. He was gliding and using an external ram air turbine to power the flight controls and one radio. Pardo had one more idea. He asked Eamon to lower his plane's tail hook. When down, the hook gave about four feet clearance between the two jets, just enough to avoid the worst turbulence. Pardo approached and managed to brace the hook against his windscreen. He could only manage it for about 20 seconds at a time, but it worked. For 10 minutes, the trick slowed the descent and both jets crept closer to Laos, but things were about to get worse. Pardo's jet had also been hit, and now his left engine was on fire. He and Wayne pulled slightly away from Eamon and shut it down but they crept back into the hook and continued. Their twin-engine jet was now flying on one engine and pushing two. The descent was worse now, and 10 minutes later they were at 6,000 feet, but they were over Laos. It was time for Eamon and Houghton to eject. They covered the nearly 90 miles with the help of Pardo and Wayne, and as fate would have it, now Pardo and Wayne wouldn't be much farther ahead. They'd burned through their fuel, and they too were forced to eject. Pardo broke two vertebrae coming down under canopy. The other men suffered similar injuries, and all but Wayne had to evade potential hostiles who they could hear hunting them on the ground. Eventually, each man was rescued, Pardo last. The military wasn't immediately impressed with Pardo's trick. It had, perhaps, lost them another jet and risked the lives of two more men. Decades passed before Pardo and Wayne were officially recognized for their actions, but at a ceremony in 1989, they were both awarded the Silver Star. Today, the story lives on and is known in aviation circles as Pardo's Push.